nothing can prepare you for fatherhood. Sure, Amazon has an endless supply of books. There's a million websites dedicated to the topic, and beyond that, there's no shortage of friends or neighbors who are willing to lend some helpful advice. Be sure to get plenty of sleep. And yet, despite all of those resources, little could have prepared me for the three versions of fatherhood that I experienced before my first child even became a teenager. I went from your typical dad with two kids to a single dad with three, to a stepdad in a blended family of five. It was a dizzying period of my life that challenged me in ways that I never could have imagined but ultimately shaped me to become a better man, a more patient man, and hopefully a better, more patient father. As all dads know, when you first hold that baby in your arm or you wake up to a plaintive wail in the middle of the night, when you play your first game of catch, there is no preparing for that swell of emotion. But dads, by and large, are the butt of the joke. We're the bumbling father who can barely make it out the door with our briefcase and our cup of coffee, struggling to get to the recital on time without embarrassing his daughter or angering his wife. We try and we fail. I was and I am no different. For my first six years of parenthood, I had an amazing wife who booked the doctor's appointments, enrolled in all the right classes, made sure our kids had sufficient tummy time, whatever that was, and knew just when to start potty training. It was as if she had memorized the entire what to expect canon. Sure, she had her moments of insecurity and failure, but those paled compared with my daily entreaty of, please don't let me screw this up. In hindsight, those were the easy years. I was the classic suburban dad, most useful on weekends, trying to be present during the week and never where I was supposed to be, whether it was at the office or at home. But I was muddling through. My wife seemed to love me. She loved me enough to want to have a third child. So we decided to forego the man-to-man -man defense and we were gonna play zone with three kids. And then one day I woke up and I was a single father of three. The painful details of what happened are not important, but 21 hours after our third child was born, my wife died. In an instant, it became a three-on-one fast break. And this, now this I hadn't signed up for. I learned at an early age that life isn't fair but in my sadness, I was not afforded the opportunity to lament this injustice or wallow in self-pity. I had a six-year-old, a two-year-old, and a newborn. They needed their dad, not some shell of a man, but someone who was present, who was available, who was accountable. And truth be told, I was lucky. I had two sisters who were there at the drop of a hat. I had friends who could be counted on for any need, a temple community who rose to the occasion. I had a mother-in-law reeling in grief, but up to the task. A father who lent a shoulder more times than I could count. Colleagues who acted like family, and a nanny who took on extra responsibility without gripe or groan. It was never a question of why me? For all the reasons that I've said, it was always a question of why not me? I had a preternatural son who internalized the loss of his mother and quickly moved into a mode of, well, I guess this is my new reality. My girls were too young to understand, and in my darkest moments I thought, gosh, how much worse would this be if it had happened 10 years later? The gravity of it all hit home about a few weeks on. My son was homesick, and I saw him laying on the couch, and I knew what he needed more than anything in the world at that moment was his mom's cuddle. I couldn't give him that. No matter what I did, I wasn't her. But I adjusted, I adapted, and most important, I grew as a father and as a man. I took on the dual role of father and mother and did what I could to provide my kids with what they needed. I failed, God, I failed a lot, but I tried and I was present. My wife had instilled in me the importance of being there and I made sure that I was. Some things were friendships, they suffered, but people gave me latitude and I took full advantage. So fast forward a few years, I become a stepdad now, now I'm really in the fire. I'd met a wonderful woman with two kids. It was a package deal, and I was up for the challenge, or so I thought. To be candid, being a single father of three was considerably easier than being a stepdad to two. The learning curve was and remains quite steep. Now, stepdads were a dime a dozen. Being one doesn't make me special. What makes our situation unusual is that even though all five kids live with us, 
My stepkids have two biological parents, and my kids, they have just one. As step parents, we try to fill the void, but at best, we're a reasonable facsimile. That's okay, but it means that I retain the vestiges of being a single dad. When my kids wake in the middle of the night, they come to my side of the bed. When it's time for their annual checkups, I make the appointments and I take them. When they give that biography presentation at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday morning, they want me there. Now, none of this is an indictment or even a judgment on my new wife. She's a terrific stepmom. But this is just our reality. As a parent, as a father, you give your kids what they need. And my kids need me. And truth be told, that couldn't make me any happier. But I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a daily challenge. All the three phases of my fatherhood have been very different, and yet all quite similar. The journey has been fraught. And it certainly wasn't what I envisioned when my first wife looked at me at the top of the target escalator and said, let's have a baby. <laughs> Every dad celebrating Father's Day has his own story, some more harrowing than others, and you'll hear a great many tonight. But whether we're single dads, stepdads, or just plain old garden variety dads, we all have the same goals. Provide for our kids. Be there when they need us. Guide them on their way, and gosh, hope like hell that they take care of us in our old age.